You've got to remember teams of all kinds sometimes are just committees with a fancy name called teams. In order to become a team, you have to be aligned around a bullseye that is big enough and graphic enough and vivid enough that everybody says, I want to shoot for this, sometimes called a big, hairy, audacious goal. Once you've got that, then people are no longer thinking about me versus you, my way, your way. They're saying, could we do that? Could we be a part of making that happen? Sony in the 50s wrote as their vision statement to make Made in Japan synonymous with quality. If you were on that team, it would be a matter of national pride and personal pride. If you were a part of the Microsoft team that said, we're going to put a computer on every desktop, well, it's hard to feel turf protecting or provincial when you're in the face of an aspiration like that. So that's the first step. The second step is to begin to let everybody share with each other what their own leadership and team styles are. Because if you can create a context where somebody says, well, here's my strength and here's where I might need support, or here's what I'm good at and yet here's one of the areas I struggle with. Now, people might say, but how will you get such honesty? Leader goes first. If the leader goes first and will speak openly about it, then everybody will find the courage because they'll realize it's in their best interest. That's how they're going to get support. Third thing is, within cultures, where you find cultural differences, we've got to go to, say, the more aggressive cultures and say to them, you're going to be judged on how much you get ideas out from your less outspoken colleagues. And to the quieter cultures, which many times we do find in Asia, we have to appeal to that sense of duty that is so robust in Asia and say, your contribution is needed. I need you to put fears and anxieties aside and give yourself to the task. So you appeal to the better angels in both natures. And then I think the important thing is to create milestones that lets the team know in tracking terms, just like a plane. Am I headed for the mountain? Am I headed for the runway? Are we on course? Are we off course? And that tracking has to always include both a rich appreciation of what's going right and a celebration of the individuals and the teams that have helped make it right, and then a robust, constructive challenge of where we should be producing both better results and where we need better interaction. But always if we appreciate what works, we give people again the courage to look at what could be improved. Think of it this way. If I tell you what you do wrong, you feel low. And then I say, what can you improve? You say nothing. I worked so hard to produce this rubbish. But when I show you what you've been doing well, your own self-concept, your own standards go up. So when then I say, what can you do better? You say lots of things. And we have to do that for each individual on the team. I think some goals bring out better leadership because the nature of the goal is so powerful. If you think of Nelson Mandela, story many of us know, he was a transformational leader. But the appeal he made required leadership from all kinds of people in South Africa who weren't necessarily great leaders. Some of them were part of the problem not long before that. But the vision, the idea, the goal of a South Africa that could come together, that could transcend its past, suddenly became tangible enough, real enough, that even these people who in the past were the source of the problem rose above themselves. So somewhere there probably needs to be a leader lurking because that's where the goal is going to come from. But a goal has to be like the made in Japan goal, like the goal of we will make sure that every child in this country gets a first class education. There are certain goals of that nature that it's hard to be against and they at least pull out more of our leadership. So in our companies, we have to ask, what's the biggest thing we can aim for? That has teeth, it's practical, but it still touches the spirit.